Hello and welcome back to the Agribusiness Academy podcast. Today we're going to do something a little different as we present a case study on indigo agriculture. First I'd like to do some podcast administration. A couple of weeks ago I had the opportunity to speak to a listener for the first time. The opportunity to speak to someone who has spent time listening and learning from our content. But when I reviewed the the conversation, it presented a different challenge to me, as it made me realise that the podcast isn't doing enough to interact with the community that supports it, to the people that listen like uh, like you. So I want to open up my inbox to you as a listener, whether you have a question for our experts, a topic you'd like us to cover, or just some feedback on what type of podcast you want us to produce. This is especially true today as we're presenting something new and we'd love to get your thoughts. Let me know at tom, T-O-M, at agribusiness.academy or via the contact form on our website. Before we start today's case study, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about our new food and agribusiness management program. This is an online interactive program which is completely unique within the sector. It's a mix of interactive sessions with experts, one-to-one coaching and group work, takes the best parts of learning in a classroom and and brings it all online so that anyone can access it wherever they are in the world and improve their performance. There are five core modules in the program but to give you a flavour of the topics we're talking uh, disruptive food value chains, agri-food tech, novel ingredients, changing consumer preferences, food sustainability, food distribution, uh, retail developments, a huge array of topics Those are complemented by our digital learning library of over 200 courses. So you're able to personalise the programme to suit your business and suit your ambitions and really make an impact in your day-to-day work. To find out more or to apply, visit agribusiness.academy forward slash programme. The next start date at the time of recording is in early April 2019. But if you're listening beyond that, check the website and you'll you'll be able to find the next start date. I'll talk a little bit more about the program at the end of the podcast. This week, CNBC rolled out its sixth annual Disruptor 50 list of innovative private companies that are transforming their respective industries. Some of our best investment ideas are alumni of this prestigious list. You know we've been recommending Spotify and Dropbox. Tonight, I want to tell you about number 18 on this year's list, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's called Indigo Agriculture. While there are a bunch of publicly traded companies that have been transforming the business of farming by genetically modifying seeds, Indigo takes a different approach. The company focuses on the microbes that have evolved alongside plants for millions of years. At the moment, Indigo goes focus on corn, wheat, soybeans, rice, and cotton. The, their microbe-based seed treatments can make crops that are more resistant to drought or that require less fertilizer. It's an intriguing approach to agricultural technology. At around the time of this introduction from Jim Cramer on CNBC's Mad Money, Indigo Agriculture received a valuation of $1 billion to what must be said was a mixed response. It made us curious to learn about Indigo, a company that's innovating on plant microbes and using the best performing ones in the seed production process and to improve the productivity of farmers. What struck me in that clip was the enthusiasm for a business in the agribusiness sector, mentioned in the same sentence as Dropbox and Spotify. Have a listen to how David Perry, Indigo's CEO, in the same interview frames the company. Modern agriculture is really built on technologies that were created decades ago. Synthetic fertilizer, synthetic chemicals, GMOs, and plant breeding. On this consumer-facing show, David immediately calls out some of the practices that we know the public are increasingly growing wary of. But what does the solution actually mean for the industry? While several agriculture innovations and investments are focused on productivity enhancement, Most farmers will be honest in letting you know that they're interested in enhancing their incentives, not productivity. The reality of tech-focused agriculture, or ag tech, is that in many cases it will fall short in enhancing farmers' income and incentives. Several farmers and farm groups have told us that increasing productivity almost always resulted in lower net incomes for them. This, of course, is anecdotal evidence, but we do know that the Food Environment Reporting Network have published projections below the 50-year average on net farm income in the United States. I'll put a link to the article in the show notes. In these projections, net farm incomes all the way up to 2022 in the US 
uh, expected to be way below this 50 year average figure. If all the tech, economies of scale and market mechanism in the US can't come to the rescue of farmers, it's very unlikely the outlook is going to be positive in other emerging markets. So how does indigo agriculture shake up the industry and buck these projections? Let's have a listen to how they describe their solution. We expect to be nearly 10 billion people by 2050. And to feed that many people, we have to increase the amount of agricultural production by almost 70%. And we really need to do that in a more healthy and environmentally sustainable way. Boston-based Indigo believes the answer can be found in nature. And now they have the data to prove it. Is that the, the first year's commercial production data suggests that overall, um, indigo cotton had a positive effect on yields with an average of about 10% and in some cases even higher than that, up to 20%. Jeffrey von Maltzen, co-founder and CTO at Indigo, explains a little more about the science here. So imagine a microbe that gets to live inside of a, a plant that lives in the desert. It's scorchingly hot outside, there's zero water available, but the microbes that are on the inside of the plant, they get the benefit of the water that the plant has inside of it, the sugars that the plant have inside of it, the, the nitrogen and other nutrients. And um, in exchange for that incredible home, they have an incentive to help that plant be protected from whatever might damage it. So that means making substances that could protect it from insects or protect it from viruses, fungi, bacteria. It also means protecting them from a whole bunch of things that we don't really usually think about microbes affecting, like drought stress, heat stress, salt stress, cold stress. And how does that really impact farmers? Well, here's Sean Holiday from H2H Farms who partnered with Indigo Cotton, one of their first projects. I planted 40 acres treated, 40 acres not treated. I harvested it myself separately. And where the product was on the seed, I got uh, right at 60 pounds more to the acre. For Sean Holiday, 60 pounds is an 11% increase in yield, which means more money in his pocket. Bring us back to the consumer-driven language that David Perry used in that first clip I shared. Just in the last few days, Indigo have partnered with Anheuser-Busch to deliver serious business benefits that also play into the expectation consumers have of products and of companies, uh, as we've spoken so many times on the podcast about. Ingrid de Rijk, Vice President and Procurement from Anheuser-Busch, gave this quote. This trailblazing collaboration supports three of Anheuser-Busch's 2025 sustainability goals by advancing smart agriculture, watershed health, and carbon emissions reductions. If I quote Indigo's press release on the collaboration, it will help to define exactly what Indigo are doing in practice. Indigo's full suite of microbial and digital offerings, trained on-farm professionals, and data analysis capabilities allow the company to guarantee identity preservation and transparency in the planting, growing and delivery of rice to meet defined thresholds for sustainability. With indigo microbial technology and data-driven agronomic support, growers are able to improve rice yield while reducing chemicals, irrigation and fertilisers. Rice is the interest of Anheuser-Busch, but if you apply that proposition to any other crop, you can see the potential impact of indigo on business and on the planet. Our role at Agribusiness Academy is to understand, review and educate on business models of innovative companies. And rarely have we come across a technology solution that connects their revenue model to the realised returns of their customers. On the business model front, Indigo Ag looks to be a pioneer within the agri-input industry, and it's quite refreshing to see their approach. I quote Eric Jerk, Head of Strategy and Business Development, on their engagement approach with farmers. Instead of marketing and selling our product like traditional ag companies, charging a fixed upfront price, we are committed to sharing risk and performance in an aligned way. For our first cotton launch, for example, instead of asking farmers to pay us up front for our seed treatment, we asked them to pay us a fixed amount per acre post-harvest, so long as they saw a certain amount of increased lint production. With that context in place, I've asked Dr. Vijay Ndanala, founder of Agribusiness Academy, to take a look into the detail of Indigo's business model and to outline how case studies like this fit into the Food and Agribusiness Management Programme. 
Within our digital food and agribusiness management program, we use real life case studies such as Indigo Agriculture. Several existing and new players are working on the same problem of a seed uh, yield product uh, yield enhancement or productivity enhancement solutions. So what differentiates Indigo Ag? Their approach to creating value chain to help their core customers capture the added value created with their solution. So let me explain what this means. So uh, to start with, so just uh, um, how did they, how did they start uh, launching their solution uh, is by creating a partnership program. So what is a partnership program? Instead of, um, so this is a partnership that they make with the farmers, that is the growers who use their seed. Um, and rather than asking them to pay for their seed upfront, they ask them, they ask their growers to pay a fixed fee per acre post harvest, as long as they saw certain increase in the yield. So that way they are kind of guaranteeing the outcome of their product, right? And uh, that gives the farmers the incentive to adopt their, te their technology faster. We all know, uh, working in the agriculture value chains, that quality and yield do not equate to financial returns, higher quality and or better quality and higher yield do not equate to financial returns. So to ensure that the growers use their products, using their products receive optimal financial returns, they have launched a marketplace so that um, the best buyers who can value the quality um, that is produced by Indigo Ag Seeds um, are on that marketplace and they pay the fair price to the produce to the growers. So that way they eliminate the inefficiencies between uh, supply and demand. Um, so so the, the market side inefficiencies. So that is another interesting innovation to make sure that their core customer, that is the grower, captures the value that, uh, uh, that he's, he has produced. Then uh, another interesting innovation uh, or added value is on the side of um, the logistics and, and the storage, for example. So um, we all know that in the commodity value chains, cost, uh, cost is a big uh, factor that contributes to the bottom line. So if you lower the cost by 1%, that can really have a lot of uh, positive effect on your bottom line. So, um, so then they understood that the storage is a very important component so that you know uh, the growers, uh, if they have the possibility to stare, store their output, um, till the right price and the right buyer is found uh, that could enhance their uh, financial returns uh, and the bottom line. So they um, uh, tried and um, worked out on the solution to uh, for on-farm storage. And the same with transportation. Uh, transportation. So transportation uh, costs um, are not uh, very consistent. Um, and they are not very transparent. So they created a sort of a transportation marketplace to facilitate, um, uh, you know, that uh, the the, uh, the logistics happen at at on time, on demand, and at the right price. Right. So they don't stop there. They continue to expand their partnerships downstream the value chain, um, especially with volume buyers, so that they can create a blitz scaling effect with their growers. So the more buyers and the more volume buyers they can bring on to their ecosystem, the more growers would be interested to adopt their, uh, their seeds, that is the core product. So this is a very popular Harvard business case. Um, and uh, in our course, we explain the insights from this business within our learning and interactive sessions and let the learners that is the professionals who are working in different businesses, it could be at ag tech or conventional businesses, work out solutions to some specific business dilemmas uh, such a business like Indigo Ag would face. So they do that in groups and uh, work out solutions to which we offer feedback and uh, based on their efforts on the solution, uh, efforts to find the solution and the feedback, they are able to action the learning within their own business context. 
So that concludes our review of Indigo. As I said at the top of the show, we'd love to hear your feedback. And if you have any questions about this business model, we could do a follow-up podcast uh, and go in depth on some of those. And if you or your business would like to know more about the digital learning and coaching program, please visit our website, agribusiness.academy. The program is packed with interesting case studies from exciting businesses like Indigo. It's delivered in a really interactive way, complemented by amazing experts and world leaders in their field, as you'll know if you've listened to the podcast for a while. Uh, And you can get coaching from those kind of people too. It really can't be a better way to learn, especially online. It's super accessible for anyone, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.